What's up there, Facebook? It's your girl coming to you live here from Boston, Mass. It has been a while since I have done a live. But I thought, let's see here. There we go. Sorry about that. But I thought that I would shoot this quick video uh, and come to you and talk to you about traveling during the pandemic. Um, just came back. I'm sure many of you guys have been following me. Uh, you see that I just came back from uh, Miami. And so I just thought I would share a couple of things with you uh, this evening, all right? So I actually wrote down a couple of notes, so I might look down just a bit just to make sure that I bring everything to you. Um, so again, it's Monday. Happy Monday. How is everyone's day going? Uh, for those who come and hang out with me, I appreciate you coming in. If you're live, you catch this live with me then say hey say what's up uh, if you catch it during a replay simply put replay and just say hey what's up any anything that I talk about today you got questions on feel free to drop them in the comments and I will definitely get an answer back to you as soon as possible so I'm actually shooting this on my computer so I'm just actually going to check my phone to make sure that I am live as well all right all right, so I see that I'm live there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm also going to share this out to my group as well. So give me one second. Let's see here. I'm trying to find it here. There it is. All right. So we're going to share it there as well. So all right, all right, all right. So we're just going to go ahead and get started and take our time. We're going to have a little fun, hopefully today. Um, so again, I hope you guys will just come on in and hang out with me. Drop a comment again. Let me know you're here. Say, hey, what's up? Let me know where you are living in from. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's see here. All right. So, okay, so, <clears throat> again, as you guys know, I just recently came back from Miami. I know the world is starting to open back up. I know people are having concerns about what it's like still traveling during the pandemic. So, I thought I would share my experience with you in, in hopes that this will help you uh, plan for your next adventure um, if you decide to go ahead and travel. All right, so. Again, traveling during the pandemic, what do you need to know? So the first thing that I would suggest is to make your own what I call COVID kit. Now, I actually have one here. Uh, something simple that I made. It's just a regular Ziploc bag I have at home. And in here, I have a couple of uh, face masks, as you can see. I have about four of those in here as well. I have some hand sanitizer actual wipes that I have in here um, as well as a bottle of hand sanitizer I also have some gloves in here but I use those um, so that's kind of what I make just to kind of have my own uh, my own kit with me now you can I'm seeing in stores I, I've even seen it five below you can get these little little kits already pre-made that you can take with you but most of the time we have these things at home so I figure hey why not now I actually I thought I had one over here but I actually just wore my regular mask that I ordered and bought I was able to wear those no one said I had to change them out but again I just had these just in case someone said hey you can't wear the other mask or you maybe you lost that one for some reason so you always had some handy um, just in case you lose the one that you have all right so again and make sure you also put some lotion so again you want to have your mask your hand sanitizer a bottle of that some hand sanitizer wipes if you have them some gloves and some lotion and I keep like I said all those in that Ziploc bag so it just makes it easier it's in my carry-on bag that I take on the plane with me because one of the things that I do when I get on the plane and we're going to talk about this What's up, brother? Thank you for living in with me. One of the things that I, one of the first things I do once I get on the plane is that I kind of, even though they have the whole whole fogging system and things that they do, 
I wipe down my uh, armrest. I bring down. I wipe down the the tray, um, the seat behind me. I wipe it all down. I sanitize it myself. I even have a little small bag that I just dump it in, so that it's not in the bag that um, I have all the other stuff in. All right. So again, you want to make sure that you have a COVID kit uh, prepared with you in your carry-on. All right. Now let's talk about our mode of transportation. Now. A lot of times, you know, we, we get this bad rep, we hear this bad rep, and people say, I'm never flying, can you guess, we call it Soul Plane, but it's actually Spirit Airlines, alright guys? Spirit Airlines is not that bad. Now, I, we're, we're going to talk about it. So, I know people are going to watch this, people are hanging on alive and saying, yeah right, Spirit, we, we're not having that. So, let's talk about it, alright? Let's, let's talk about Spirit Airlines for a little bit. So, what are some of, I'm going to start with some of the disadvantages, and then we're going to move into some of the advantages of uh, traveling on Spirit Airlines, okay? So, some of the disadvantages are, is that the seats can be small. I find maybe typically a little smaller than most um, regular airplanes. If you're flying your JetBlue, Southwest, your Deltas, American Airlines, these seats can be a bit smaller. Um, we were on, I believe it was an A bus I think 831 something like that but it was a big plane we had like there was I think almost 39 rows each row with three seats except for the big seats um, and the plane was packed there weren't um, they weren't um, you know um, they were utilizing all seats so the middle seat was not empty at all um, so you just have to remember and just be mindful that the seats are small. The other thing, um, because we all have electronics, there are no outlets, so there's no place to plug up your devices, which can be, you know, can be difficult if you're trying to, you know, use your phone to, you know, listen to music or do other things. So you want to make sure that your phones are fully charged before you get on the plane. Now, inside the airport, there are, you know, outlets and stuff, so make sure that you kind of charge yourself up um, before you get on the plane. So those are some of the disadvantages. Now, some of the some of the advantages are Spirit is a one airline that I've noticed has a lot of um, non-stop flights. You know, and so people talk about, well, I can go on this other airline versus Spirit, but sometimes you can't get a direct flight on that other airline. And sometimes with Spirit, you can. Um, so you just have to, it's kind of like I wrote in my book, uh, the ultimate guide to cruising. You just have to know um, what you're paying for up front. Well, once you know the cost, you kind of set some money aside for that, then you can kind of be okay. So again, that's one of the advantages that you get direct flights. Um, but the other thing with Spirit is that you have to, well, you don't have to. You can get an assigned seat. If you want some space, okay, they have what they call the big seats. There's maybe two four six it might be eight eight of those maybe eight of those in the front of the plane okay those seats range in price you'll have to see what it is when you book it it could be twenty seven dollars and that's going to be each way if that's what you want but if you're going to fly spirit and you want to you know have some space and have some room and you know there's not three people and you're not you know uh, squeezed up next to each other then go ahead and pay the extra money for the big seat Trust me, it's worth it. First, like I said, two, I think first two rows. So I think it's actually only four. I think it's the first two rows and you get those uh, big seats. But it's, again, worth the money, okay? Um, other than that, my suggestion is, you know, they will offer you um, other seat choices at different rates. Closer to the front of the plane, maybe $27, $28. Middle of the plane, maybe $17 maybe further in the back might be a little bit less i will honestly say don't waste your money on paying for those extra seats they're going to seat you somewhere they're small so uh save your money if you can't get the big seats then save your money and don't um pay for the other seats unless you really want to sit closer to the front where that means you could get off a lot sooner um when you get to your destination but other than that 
I would say don't pay for it. Now, if you, you know, but here's the other thing too. You have to pay for bags. So you have to pay for your carry-on and your check bags as well. Here's my suggestion if you're going to fly Spirit. Do it when you're booking your uh, flight. Because if you do it later on, after the fact, once you get there, it's going to be way more money to check a bag. And again, remember that price is going and coming. So you want to make sure that if you are going to fly Spirit and you're going to either carry on a bag, which, which is what I did. I carried my bag on and then um, we also checked the bag. So you just want to make sure that you prepay for those things before you head to um, the head to uh, the airport the other thing is that you are allowed to carry um, a personal bag so I was able to bring my little small backpack um, and there was no charge for that so that's what you kind of need to know about spirit spirits not bad you just have to know what you're getting into everything with spirit is pretty much a la carte and most airlines we have to pay for bags anyway it could be fifty sixty dollars depending on the airline so when you think about it with the exception of Southwest Southwest right now is the only airline that I know of where you still get two free bags um, when you fly with them but other than that most airlines you have to pay for check bags most of the time so just remember that if you're thinking that well you know why don't I have to pay for it over spirit like I said you do have to pay for a carry-on um, but again um, that's totally, totally up to you. All right. So that's about the airline. So now let's talk about the hotel. Now, where we stayed, stayed in Miami. I stayed in a hotel right in downtown Miami. What I would suggest is to find a hotel that's close to the things that you want to do. All right. So if you already kind of pre-planned and kind of figured out what it is you want to do, you know, things you want to see then try to find a hotel that is close to those things, if possible. All right. The other thing I'll talk about with hotels is, and I've, I think I just actually shared this on um, last Tuesday's tip, is to ask the hotels if there's a refrigerator in the room. Now, people may say why. So let me tell you why. So simply because there's probably a store close by. Um, a CVS or something, Walgreens, when we were in Miami, we were literally around the corner was a Whole Foods. And on the next corner was a CVS. So we were able to go in, pop in, buy some juice, some water, whatever the case may be. And, um, you know, put it in the fridge and have it nice and cold. And you don't have to wind up paying those high prices at the hotels for the soda and bottled water and those things if that's what you want to do. All right, so just remember that. Always ask if there's a fridge um, in the room. Again, finding a store that's close by will help you save on those costs as well. All right, now, almost done here. But now we're going to talk about getting around. Getting around in the city that you are in. So, again, let's kind of go back to what I said before. Staying in the hotel that's close to the things that you want to do. All right. Now you have two choices normally when you are, you know, traveling and you're in another another city or whatever, and that's either to rent a car or to Uber. Now, let's talk about rental cars. Rental cars are a great way to get around, see the city. You're not having to spend a whole lot of extra money. You still have to pay for gas, so don't forget that. But the other thing you want to remember in and find out from your hotel when you book is if they offer free parking or valet parking because valet parking can be another expense that you're not aware of that can run you fifty sixty dollars a day so if you're there for you know five days and it's you know sixty bucks then you're looking at about another three hundred and what's that six times five is what's that thirty so you're looking at about another three hundred dollars just in uh, parking fees okay so again if you have a budget you want to make sure that you're factoring in all these different things um, if this is the choice that you choose. Now, for me, I like to Uber. I Uber around. I put money aside for that because I know that that's what I want to do. And for me, I do it because I drive a lot for work every day. I'm on vacation, and so I just kind of want to chill out. 
Um, but again, just know what your costs are, okay? Just, again, have an idea of what that looks like, all right? Um, the other thing I meant to mention about hotels as well, too, is to also check out and look for resort fees because a lot of times hotels will charge for some resort fees or activity fees. They call it different things, but usually that's if they have like a gym and like our hotel had a gym, it had a virtual bowling alley, you know, there was a pool, there was no charge for the pool, but they had other activities and so they charge a fee um, if you use those things. And so that's another cost that you want to make sure that you include when you're adding up those, uh, adding up those expenses, all right? I forgot to mention that. Um, and then the last thing we're going to talk about is activities. And so if you know what you want to do, if you kind of have an idea of what you want to see, for us, we knew, excuse me, that the Wynwood District and the art thing was something that we wanted to do. So we pre-planned for, well, we didn't pay, pay for, actually, we didn't pay for tickets. I should have, but we did. But, and I know better, I know I should have did that, but you want to make sure that you pre-plan for those things, all right? Because it does a couple of things. Sometimes you will simply get a discount for buying your tickets online, maybe a couple of dollars off. And then it also, you avoid the long lines because usually when you go to different activities, there's usually two lines. There's usually the line where you have to stand in line and pay for your ticket to get into the event. And then there's the line for people who have pre-paid uh, for their tickets. And usually that line is always shorter because you're just kind of in and you're kind of out. So if you know what you want to do, you know where you want to go, um, make sure that you prepay for as much stuff as you can up front. All right? So that is all that I have for you guys today. The last thing that I want you guys to Re, uh, get from this video is to simply enjoy yourself you guys are on vacation you want to go you want to take lots of pictures you want to go out to eat you want to do all that oh that's what didn't mention the food didn't mention the food now i will drop after this live is over i will share with you guys the places that i went to places that i ate at um had some um some great food some great experiences had stopped over in Little Havana and had a wonderful time at a great restaurant, Puerto Rican restaurant called Mafongo. Food was absolutely amazing. Um, so again, these are other things that you want to remember, other expenses that you're going to have. Um, but again, if you're planning it, plan it out, know what you're going to spend, and then there won't be any problems. But again, if you know what, if you say, you know what, all this sounds good, but it's a lot to remember, and I don't want to do all that. And I don't, you know what? Hit me up. Let me know, and I will be more than glad to help you plan your next travel extravaganza. Wherever it is that you want to go, hit me up. Say, help me book this trip so I can get out of here because I don't want to worry about all of the other stuff. Um, but again, you know, food is another big thing. I had um, an experience at another place we went to. Um, I actually shared it in another video, but I actually went on their Facebook page and wrote a review. Um, the s customer service wasn't great, and so I, I, I made them aware of it by putting the review on their page. And you know what? Let me say this to you guys. Don't be afraid, if you're having bad service somewhere, to let someone know. Um, Twitter's a good place to... Um, you know, make a comment on someone's page, and also if they have a Facebook page, there's a review section on Facebook on their page. Drop a uh, drop a, drop a review in there as well. If you had great service, put that as well. If you had bad service, put that as well. But remember that all of these things help. All right, it helps not only the owner know what they can maybe improve on, but it it also lets you know that hey, I have a voice as well. And people will see those things as well. So you just want to be mindful, okay? You don't have to be nasty about it, but just make sure that you put your honest opinion about what you thought about the, the service and the food, all right? And again, lastly, you just want to enjoy yourself. Just enjoy yourself. Again, you are on vacation, you know? Um, live it up. We get one life, guys, one life. And at the, at the end of the day, you really want to be able to just enjoy as much of this uh, of your life, as much of this world as you can. 
Um, I did something totally different this time. Normally we'll catch an Uber from the airport. I decided to rent a limo um, and take us from the airport to our hotel. And again, the service was great. Um, he was there on time, was a great tour guide. We actually used him um, to go out one night. We went somewhere else and I called him up and asked if he would take us there. So again, guys, just enjoy life. Go on vacation, have a great time. I know people may be afraid and think that we can't travel during COVID, wear your mask. I know here in Massachusetts, they're talking about, you know, opening things back up by the end of the month. Mask mandate may not be so much uh, needed, in, you know, and everywhere, just in some places. But just mask up, you know, sanitize. And, you know, if you get people standing too close to you, turn around, give them a look. And if you need to say something, again, you don't have to be nasty, but just say, hey, can you back up some? All right. So that's it, guys. I've been on here for about 20 minutes, brother. I thank you for living in with me, hanging out, seeing what I was talking about. Again, uh, if you like this video, let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know as well. But until next video, guys, I appreciate you all. Peace.